one of the overlooked ingredients in making beer is water, which is ironic because beer is mostly water. One of the things about using water from your municipal supply is that it generally contains chlorine or chloramine. Hopefully it's chlorine because that's easier to get out. This is what I use. It's just a filter, it's an activated carbon filter. Yeah, I let it dry out each time after I use it so it doesn't end up going green and growing algae and stuff like that. That's just the cap and I put a hose attachment on that side and this is a little ball valve to stop the water from coming out. Not, not, not essential at all. I mean, you can connect whatever hose fitting you want. It's uh, something that you would normally use to for a bob fitting, but I just got a screw thread as an adapter. So let's fill up some water tank. Uh, put this together quick. Literally, just make sure it's in the middle. And then it's on nice and tight. Okay, let's get some water ready. Of course, I'll just turn the tap on. I'm just uh, adding a bit of water to go through the pipe. Just rinse it out, any dust and stuff like that. Not that it really matters, but I'd try not to get my filter you know, too clogged up. See, it takes a while, because that water was right there to work, work its way through the filter, which kind of implies that it's actually working as a filter. If that water started coming out immediately, I'd be a bit worried. It'd be like bypassing the filter. If you don't want to filter your water, you can use something like a Camden tablet to get rid of the chlorine. You can also boil your water for 20 odd minutes, etc. to get it boils off the chlorine. So there's a couple of different ways to do this. And the other way is just to buy, you know, bottled water, like spring water. And yeah, I've got it going kind of slowly at the moment. Yeah, that means it takes a little bit longer to go through the filter. So hopefully it filters a bit better. If you're in a rush, you can just speed it up a little bit, add a bit more pressure and it'll come through quicker. Yeah, so normally I just leave it like that until this is full, then I grab the next container and fill that up with water. Um, I only need to do that because I need more water, I'm making bigger batches of beer, because uh, it's more time efficient that way. If you don't want to do all this filtering stuff, I mean the carbon filter, you know, the whole thing together was about 200 rand, in fact less than 200 rand. And the rand is not worth much, it's about 20 to 1 to the British pound in 2022, so you can get an idea, <clears throat> we're talking like 10 pounds including tax, filter and housing, so yeah, not very expensive, although if you don't have space for this, then maybe Camden tablets or buy spring water, but by the time you've bought spring water a few times, you may as well just bought the filter, right? And the other thing to bear in mind is that the water that I'm using in this water here is basically rain water, which is caught in the mountains and then it's, you know, stuck in a dam and put through a sand filter and chlorinated. That's my water. So it doesn't have very many minerals in it. Like total dissolved solids are quite low. Uh, if you have borehole water, if you're living in an arid area and they're pumping it out of an underground aquifer, you're going to have the opposite. Um, you'll be adding distilled water or something to your water, or reverse osmosis water, something like that to get the salts level lower. We'll talk about water chemistry in a bit. Yeah, so I just let it run, I just leave the lid on just to keep some dust out of it. At this point, you don't have to worry too much about sanitization because the next step is to boil this water. So, yeah, anything in there is going to get killed. So I do like to adjust the water chemistry using uh, brewing salts. So for example, we've got gypsum or calcium sulfate. We've got calcium chloride. And we've got uh, Epsom salts, which is a... Uh, Where's this one again? Magnesium sulfide. There we go. I can't remember what it is. It's a tiny little scale. It's actually bought it from the basically the vapors. So now you know what vapors are good for. They can sell you cheap scales, which are quite accurate. Apparently they need them, a lot of them. So I don't quite know what all they're weighing out with them, but I suppose they're mixtures and stuff. The point is uh, you need, a, you know, depending on what your, your water chemistry starts with, then that determines how much you need to add to get to where you want to. So just, I can't really tell you to do exactly what I'm doing. Uh, unless I was, we were both starting with say, uh, distilled water or water that be, had all the salts removed from it, then yes, yes, I could. But without knowing my water chemistry, then this doesn't help you that much. And then it depends on how many liters of water you're using as well, because it's a, it's a ratio of salts to that. Um, I'm gonna do this for 20 liters of water right now. Uh, so because of my water chemistry, I'm gonna add 1.1 of, uh, 
gypsum. So we check here. And what have we got? That's half a gram. Oh, 1.17. Not too bad. 1.14, getting there. 1.11, that's pretty close. Uh, yeah, so that's 1.1 grams. So that's pretty easy to weigh stuff out like that. That's the gypsum. Do the Epsom salts next. And we need 0 0.76, so quite a bit less. Okay, that's about two thirds of it. Seven two, seven five. Yeah, okay. That'll probably be seven six now. Sometimes you're adding so little that it doesn't realize that you've added anything. But if you do add the whole thing in one go, then it'll measure it right. Okay, so that's Epsom salts, and we need calcium chloride. Um, this is the the di I'd say dihydrate, and then you've got the Basically, you, you know, if you let it absorb water, then it, it becomes heavier, but you're not really getting as much calcium or as much chloride then because you have more water. And sometimes I just use one of these because it can just handle it. And now we need 2.89 grams. 1.42. Yeah, I can use up some of these bigger chunks now. Ha! Huh. 2.89. For the camera, you saw it recorded. No edits, nothing. So I like to add this to my hot liquor tank. If you don't, I mean, you can add your, your salts to your mash tun and also your boil kettle. I just tend to add them all to hot liquor tank. Uh, there's various pros and cons about that. Depends what you're trying to do. Okay, let's so add them and stir them in. One good stirrer. Mm. Basically, put them all in here. Try and keep this dry. There's the steam coming off the hot liquor tank, which is basically just my source of hot water. Uh, the steam gets on here, then it gets caked on, and then you try and weigh out the next thing. It's difficult. You have to clean it first and dry it, and blah, blah, blah. Right, so as I said, we just mix it in. I like to give it a good stir, and then you can actually rinse out the thing. That's the benefit of using glass instead of plastic. It's not going to melt. I'll try and give it a good stir. I've overheated the water, by the way. Not on purpose. I was busy recording some part of this process and wasn't paying attention. So the water temperature is very important. That's definitely a bit hot at 90 degrees. One thing we can do is we can dilute it with some cold water, which is basically called the decoction. And you work out the volume of the water and its temperature, the volume of the other, you know, bit of water. So you've got your cold water and your hot water, those two. And you can, you know, figure out the ratio of hot to cold water, depending on the temperature to end up your final temperature. And there are decoction calculators online if you want to do it. But basically it's the temperature times the volume of the cold and the temperature and the volume of the hot. And that equals the temperature times the, the volume of the final one. So it's not that complicated. Okay, we're already down to 89 degrees Celsius, so we're cooling down.